go. Good afternoon, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this uh, side event on eHealth. Uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Marco Obiso, and I'm part of the ITUD Secretariat, which is BDT, the Telecommunication Development Bureau. And uh, we're going to discuss today about eHealth, specifically ICT for universal health coverage. Uh, which is something that, uh, as you might know, ITU is pretty engaged on in partnership with the other organization, namely, for example, the World Health Organization. So this, um, uh, let's say, panel of 55 minutes uh, side event is going to engage all of you in the discussion and uh, with the support and the expert advice of the panelists that are here with us today. Um, uh, we're supposed to have... Uh, four, but uh, unfortunately Ms. Ganesh couldn't join us today, uh, but I'm sure that uh, we will do anyway. So um, the format is going to be pretty easy. Uh, what we are going to do is to, of course, introduce all the panelists and, uh, and uh, let them provide a few open remarks to be followed by an interactive discussion where actually you can engage and you can ask questions and, uh, and uh, provide comments and provide views. The idea of the side events, just as a little background, is really to engage the ITU community and try to get inputs and views from, from your side in order to improve our own programs, our work, and to basically have a, a collaborative approach on all the issues we are tackling uh, on our daily work. Uh, so uh, I hope that we will manage to have uh, an interesting discussion and to engage you in the, in the interaction. So let me start uh, um, introducing on my right the Deputy to the Director, Mr. Yushi Torigoi, which is going to provide uh, a quick, um, let's say, uh, opening remarks in order to set the stage and then uh, step, step by step is going to introduce the other panelists and to, and to start the discussion. Yushi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Obiso. Uh, excellencies, uh, distinguished panelists, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's my great pleasure uh, to join this uh, side event on ICT for universal health coverage. Uh, in fact, this is the final uh, side event, BDT side event. Uh, thank you very much for preparing this. Uh, uh, Kemal is here uh, for preparing this event. Uh, Yaroslav and uh, uh, Sandrine and her team, uh, thank you very much for all preparation. Marco is moderating. Um, <clears throat> uh, today, we have an excellent opportunity uh, to use ICT for universal health coverage. ICT are bringing human knowledge within reach of all wherever we live for the first time human history. The principles and objectives of universal health coverage are very, very much in line with the principle and objective of universal telecommunication services that have been historically adopted by telecom providers. The ICT sector shares and complements perfectly the vision of health sector. For the health sector, it is a world where everyone can achieve healthy and productive lives, no matter who they are or where they live. For ICT sector is to connect all people in today's information society, wherever they live and whatever their means. I strongly believe that digital health is a key to better, more equitable and affordable health and care. Today, more and more people are accessing the internet from mobile devices, and this can foster systematic change and can transform healthcare driver, even in the most remote and isolated area in the world. This allows some services, notably consultation and diagnostics, or teleconsultation, or telediagnostics, which were previously available only in clinics or hospitals to become available in communities, homes, on demand through affordable solutions. This massive proliferation of ICTs and ubiquity of 
publicly available information will lead to greater consumer awareness and increasing patient empowerment. Patients, and of course, healthcare professionals too, will be able to use simple, low-cost applications to obtain first-level diagnosis based on vital signals, images, and navigating through diagnostic decision aid tools. They will be able to seek second opinion within a few online clicks or via their mobile devices. Broader access to medical knowledge and resources are changing the relationship and expectations of patients vis-a-vis -vis medical professional, and this, of course, creates new challenges as well as new opportunities. Digital health is an opportunity for all of us, including ICT players. We are key stakeholders in the upscaling of digital health. Not only digital health can open up new business relations and opportunities for you, but position you as indispensable player to achieve sustainable development goals. It is evident that both ICT and health sectors are closely aligned to achieve the same target of universal access and essential human-centered services to strive the greater equity in pursuit and in the spirit of sustainable development goals. This is our shared and common commitment today. I would like to briefly introduce our uh, ongoing project with the World Health Organization, uh, the Be Healthy, Be Mobile initiative. After some uh, years of preparation, since 2013, uh, the initiative helps governments to introduce health services for non-communicable diseases and their risk factors by using mobile devices to encourage healthy lifestyle. The initiative is now deployed in eight countries all over the world. Since this year, the project is in second phase with expanding activities, including the establishment of knowledge sharing hub in Europe. ITU and WHO uh, jointly organized a high level round table in last year to discuss how to achieve universal health coverage using ICTs. And in fact, uh, WHO Director General, uh, Dr. Tedros, will visit uh, this uh, WTDC 17 uh, the day after tomorrow uh, afternoon to address uh, the good collaboration between WHO and ITU. I'm chairing this uh, steering committee on Be Healthy, Be Mobile. Uh, to achieve the universal health coverage through ICT, we must all work together in real partnership between public private academia, between global, long-established enterprises and new startups, and between emerging and industrialized economies. I would like to call all of you to join our partnership initiative, promoting the use of ICT to achieve universal health coverage by 2030. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yushi. Um, let's proceed with the introducing the panelists that are here with us today. So on my left, we have uh, the Director General of the um, Regulatory Authority of Zimbabwe, Mr. Machengete, correct? Yes. Good. On my right, we have um, Mr. Konate, which is the Director for the Digital Economy, or Digital, uh, well, Economie Numérique. Okay, yes. at, the, at the Ministry uh, of Digital Economy, Côte d'Ivoire. And then on my further left, right, we have uh, Mr. Guillermo Bill, which is the coordinator for the network, if I translate properly, of uh, telemedicine of the Americas. So uh, the idea here is to, uh, uh, let's say, allow our speaker to have uh, short opening remarks. Now, um, the approach of the side events is to really uh, emphasize and foster uh, interaction. So I will be a very strict moderator here. And please don't shoot the messenger if I cut you down. But uh, I will try to keep, uh, uh, let's say, the intervention to four to five minutes. 
so then we can uh, have, uh, uh, let's say, a, a good dialogue with the audience. Uh, I think we'll start from you, Mr. Machangese. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you, moderator. Uh, let me begin by uh, thanking the government of Argentina uh, for a warm welcome and also for the, uh, this, this conference uh, where we are discussing very important issues. Uh, my talk will really uh, center on um, uh, three sections. I will uh, try and identify what I think is the, the challenge for uh, universal healthy coverage, and then I will look at uh, Zimbabwe as an example of those challenges, and uh, uh, possibly come up with uh, uh, some some way forward. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the universal health uh, coverage calls for an inclusive society where no one is left behind, and yet we have many others lagging behind. Telecommunications, as uh, the Deputy Director has just said, is expected to be an enabler. Yet, there are very serious challenges. The Director has just uh, uh, mentioned that uh, the D-Health and D-Mobile <coughs> is only in eight countries at the moment. That is the challenge. I want to uh, bring your attention to what Sophia, the robot, said at the United Nations on the 13th of October. When she was talking to Amina uh, Mohammed, the Deputy uh, uh, Secretary General, and when she had been asked what the United, uh, the Democratic United Nations could do uh, to alleviate uh, problems in the world. She said, and I quote, the future is here. It's just not evenly distributed. But technology is here. It's not just evenly distributed. Therefore, when we talk of success in the uh, UHC, that success has got something to do with, uh, obviously, the distribution of resources. That is the distribution of even wealth. So the real challenge in achieving UHC uh, is um, uh, equality, actually. It is difficult, therefore, to envisage for developing countries who are actually grappling with 19th century obstacles to envisage how they would achieve UHC by 2030. 2030 is not very far away from now. How they'll achieve that with empty stomachs, with no clean water, no electricity, no infrastructure, uh, no education, no industry, corruption, unemployment, and a litany of undemocratic, uh, undemocratic processes by 2030. The governments are supposed to uh, take a, a, a front, you know, a front run for, for, for UHC, but those same governments cannot tax people who are not employed. Who do they tax when the population is unemployed and living beyond, uh, living be, uh, below the poverty datum line? This, the, this is the situation, this is the problem. And that situation will actually get worse before it gets better. It is clear that the internet gap in 1996 was 10%, but right now it's 40%. So it's increasing. And with the exodus of um, uh, uh, professionals from um, uh, you know, developing countries, the situation can only get worse. So that is what I think is actually the challenge that we are facing, to be able to gain universal health coverage by 2030, which is not far. Now for Zimbabwe, yes, despite all these uh, challenges, 
we have been trying the best that we can. The government uses 23% of what its shrinking budget to try and uh, uh, mitigate these problems. We are coming up with uh, e-health, a uh, strategic plan. Government is committed to national health insurance scheme. And we also have specific funding for epidemic and infectious diseases, including uh, AIDS. We have uh, an AIDS levy. We also have uh, um, uh, a health services fund, workmen, workmen's compensation fund, um, assisted medical uh, treatment uh, order, and um, of course, the accident uh, victims fund. We are grappling with all these. And also, we are uh, also grappling with uh, telemedicine to try and reach those uh, remote areas. But I can assure you this, uh, the position is not uh, simple. It's very difficult because it needs a lot of uh, funding. Which funding may not be you know, readily available? Therefore, despite these interventions I've talked about, Universal health coverage actually remains a mirage as long as wealth and technology are not evenly distributed to propel universal health coverage from being a, a, a reverie to becoming a reality. Yesterday, I was in here, the BDT director uh, said, and I want to quote, he said, poverty anywhere presents danger everywhere. That was a loaded statement. Hence, I feel there is need for collaboration and assistance uh, to assist those who are lagging behind so that by 2030, we may approximate uh, 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 universal health coverage. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Machengedi. Well done with the timing. We are keeping uh, very good rhythm here. So the next speaker will be um, Mr. Konate from Cote d'Ivoire. And again, if you don't mind, I'll keep the, the statement in four to five minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Moderato. I'm holding this opportunity to see to pass my greetings to everybody here yeah, in this room, especially to the Argentina government for the warm hospitality. Um, I think the, the theme, the subject we're going to discuss today is uh, very important for our countries. And to understand really what it is about, I would like to bring this subject, this topic, in the context of my country, which is Cote d'Ivoire. Most of uh, people in this room maybe remember that in 2011, Cote d'Ivoire was coming from 10 years political crisis. There was a situation uh, in my country, and uh, until today, what we can say is that a very few people in Cote d'Ivoire have health insurance. We're talking about less than maybe 5% of people. The household payment as a percentage of the total health spending are among the highest in our region, which is uh, somehow the problem. Yeah. The government spending are far more on tertiary and uh, secondary than uh, primary care facilities. As we can see, the budget allocation for the government are particularly 
unfavorable for the very poor people. Because of this reason, among others, the government of Côte d'Ivoire has decided to implement a UHC strategy. This reason was were combined with a vision which stated that our country will do whatever it can to join the emerging country by 2020. Those are the key reasons for which we went for a UCH uh, a strategy. But Côte d'Ivoire today is at the very beginning of the implementation of this strategy. Our UHC aim to make it possible to all the people living in Côte d'Ivoire, national or non-national, to benefit from basic health coverage. This is our aim. This is what we're trying to, this is our target. And the benefits of which shall be defined as a basic package, a very basic package. I won't go through how it does work. I will go directly to what the WHO has defined as UHC. For the WHO, UHC is a situation in which all people who need health service receive them without inquiry, financial hardship. This is the definition. From there, what we can see in our context in terms of challenge is financial risk protection, access to quality essential health care services, access to safe, effective, quality and affordable essential medicine and vaccines. This is our understanding. View from there, the key challenges we're seeing can be, let's say, in two parts. The first set of challenges is coming from the definition of the UHC, which is service coverage, protection against the financial risk associated with disease, equity in access to care. And the second set of challenges, which is really important for the emerging country, is setting up a clear strategy the funding of the program, the implementation, and the monitoring to adjust the strategy. This is Mr. Moderator from our side, view from Côte d'Ivoire, a specific country coming from 10 years of crisis, our approach to the UHC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we will go for the last but not least speaker, which is uh, Mr. Goye Mobile. Now, I understand you have a presentation, yeah? And you are going to provide the presentation in Spanish with the translation. PowerPoint in English and translation in Spanish. So for that, you will have 20 seconds 20 to 25 seconds more of your presentation. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so let's try to stick. <laughs> so let's try to stick again to the five minutes because presentation sometimes can be long, but uh, we really would like to have the audience engaged. Okay, floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Margo. Uh, I'm sorry, but my English is not good. Uh, but the PowerPoint is in English. My my friend is traductor. <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
Nosotros desde la universidad creemos que el acceso universal a la salud con las nuevas tecnologías aplicadas a la salud es eh, de vital importancia esta herramienta para eh, garantizar digamos, el acceso a la salud universal que es el tema de esta charla. Eh, las nuevas tecnologías de la información y de la comunicación son una herramienta estratégica para dicho, para dicho uso y esto es lo que garantiza una herramienta más con estas aplicaciones para poder tener a toda la población un acceso a, digamos, de calidad y de cantidad a la, a la salud universal. Estos son unos conceptos que tenemos que la telemedicina es el uso de las telecomunicaciones y las tecnologías de la información para brindar una asistencia médica clínica a distancia. Eh, ayuda a eliminar las barreras de distancia y puede mejorar el acceso a servicios médicos en comunidades rurales distantes y situaciones de emergencias. Estas tecnologías permiten comunicaciones entre el personal médico y el paciente, así como la transmisión de imágenes y datos médicos de un sitio a otro. Otro concepto es el e-health, el e-health o la salud electrónica es un término para la práctica médica respaldado por procesos electrónicos, digitales y de comunicación por Internet. El M-Health es la práctica de la medicina y la salud pública respaldada por dispositivos móviles, teléfonos móviles, comunicaciones por satélites. Aquí eh, ven la tapa de un libro eh, publicado por la UIT y la PAJO. Este libro fue eh, editado por, en, en, digamos, por una resolución de, de la UIT junto con la PAJO y en el 2009 en Cusco se crea la red de telesalud de las Américas por una resolución eh, 1687 y esta creación de, de dicha red eh, lo que pretendía era eh, formar unos objetivos que vamos a desarrollar a continuación. Desarrollar y operar un sistema integrado de telesalud basado en una colaboración académica internacional apoyada por tecnología de la información y la comunicación con el propósito de mejorar tanto la accesibilidad como la calidad de la atención de la salud de las personas del continente americano. Objetivos específicos como estimular la generación de materiales digitales y audiovisuales de promoción de la salud para la población en general, desarrollar programas de educación continua para profesionales de la salud, desarrollar lineamientos académicos para el diagnóstico y tratamiento de las enfermedades prevalentes en la salud, implementar un programa académico para la segunda opinión virtual de alta calidad, Establecer un trabajo colaborativo entre las instituciones de salud y las relacionadas con las TIC para integrar desarrollos, sensores biométricos y aplicaciones móviles. Desarrollar una estación de telemedicina móvil para ser aplicada a poblaciones vulnerables, así como durante desastres naturales y catástrofes. Definir estándares de emergencia eh, regionales en cibersalud, contribuyendo a la interoperabilidad tecnológica y asistencial del sistema promover el desarrollo de servicios de asistencia de telesalud como primer enlace en el desarrollo de E-Health y M-Health. El sistema de telesalud comprende tres bloques más básicos. Uno es dispositivos personales de salud que controlan los signos vitales como la presión arterial, el peso, el pulso y el nivel de oxígeno y los valores de azúcar en sangre para medir y transmitir estos datos a una conexión alámbrica o inalámbrica. Un teléfono celular o una computadora personal que recopila datos de dispositivos personales de salud y los transmiten a un servidor para registrar los datos en un registro electrónico de salud remoto para su revisión clínica. El centro de servicios de salud, que es un lugar específico, físico, donde se almacena y analiza la información del paciente y puede ser una oficina especial en la universidad u hospital u otro tipo de centro relacionado con la atención médica. Las actividades es invitar a escuelas de medicina, hospitales, universitarios, organizaciones relacionadas con las tecnologías de la información y la comunicación, integrarlas a la red de telesalud de las Américas, solicitar a cada instituto que, que designe un representante, 
que será responsable de las comunicaciones con la coordinación de esta red y designar un panel de expertos de especialistas que integran los grupos responsables para redactar las guías académicas y responder a las consultas de segunda opinión. Son todas medidas básicas para poder tener un acceso universal a la salud. Identificar las mejores prácticas locales en Telehealth y eHealth en base a los estándares de la OPS y de la UIT. Los estándares eh, son muy importantes para la interoperabilidad. Evaluar las necesidades de cualquier grupo social con dificultades relacionadas con el acceso, uso y apropiación de las instalaciones de atención de eh, ITS y heridos. Y asignar prioridades de problemas de salud local y regionales que exijan pautas diagnósticas o terapéuticas específicas. Establecer grupos de trabajo que redacten las directrices considerando la evidencia científica, la disponibilidad local, los aspectos regulatorios y éticos y desarrollar una plataforma de segunda opinión y registros médicos electrónicos comunes para estimular esta colaboración entre profesionales de salud y expertos académicos para apoyar consultas, educación y capacitación médica remota. Desarrollar servicios de asistencia... Desarrollar servicios de asistencia de telesalud como centros regionales de consultoría médica, desarrollar programas para capacitar a las personas en los mecanismos de acceso a los planes de salud y desarrollar programas de educación médica a distancia relacionados con enfermedades prevalentes y problemas sanitarios regionales. Producir materiales de promoción de salud digital y audiovisuales y prevención de enfermedades para la población en general como para la educación médica en general. Desarrollar... Ok. Desarrollar estrategias para la conectividad y la interoperabilidad interinstitucional, ayudando a las organizaciones académicas y de atención de la salud a adquirir y adaptar herramientas tecnológicas a los estándares regionales de cibersalud. Alentar el uso de estaciones móviles de telemedicina. Ahí eh, se ve la estación de telemedicina móvil. Y para ir terminando, eh, dentro de la red de telesalud de las Américas, también participamos en otras redes, como es esta red que se llama Ritmo, Red Iberoamericana de Tecnologías Móviles en Salud. Esta red está formada por varios países, varias empresas y varias facultades. Ahí estas son las, los miembros de la red Ritmos. Y quería terminar con lo que empecé, que estamos convencidos que el uso de las tecnologías de la información y de la comunicación son una herramienta importantísima para poder garantizar el acceso a la salud de toda la comunidad. Por eso desde la Facultad de Ciencias Médicas de Rosario, una universidad pública, trabajamos día a día para poder fomentar este tipo de herramientas. Muchas gracias. Well, thank you. Guillermo, even if uh, you were speaking in Spanish, but the presentation was quite comprehensive, so I guess and I hope that the audience got the message. So now it's up to you, audience. Please interact as much as possible. Uh, the floor is open for questions, comments, inputs, views, whatever you want to ask to the panelists and to, to the BDT. Uh, and we have uh, another good 15 minutes for the discussion, so please go ahead. Yes, maybe you can introduce yourself, uh, everyone that wants to take the floor, so then we know who we're speaking to. Thank you. Thank you very much, moderator. My name is Gapari. I'm part of the uh, Zimbabwe delegation. Um, I want to thank uh, the panelists for their presentations. Indeed, they were quite uh, detailed. Um, we heard of actual situations in two African countries, two developing countries. And we also heard of the ideal situation in so far as uh, universal health care uh, could be. Uh, what I have observed is that uh, uh, in most uh, or almost all multilateral uh, negotiations that take place, the narrative is that one of a lack of financial resources uh, to bridge the actual kind of development that we want. And my question would be to BDT to say in this particular situation where the majority 
lack financial resources for development, what uh, does the ITU envisage as a stopgap measure to bridge this divide? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, so just for everyone, uh, we're talking about financial resources. We're talking about lack of resources in some countries, which is very typical and a recurrent problem for all of us. Maybe I can take another question, and then uh, we allow the panelists to answer. Please. Thank you, sir. My name is Guillermo Sorlerman for the Ibero-American Telemedicine Foundation. And my question is for Guillermo Bill. Uh, I'd like to know about if the telemedicine station is in use now in this moment. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Uh, I guess uh, the, director, the deputy to director wants to answer, and then we'll pass the floor to Guillermo for the other question, right? OK, yes. Uh, uh, thank you. No, no, okay. uh, before okay. the sorry, deputy sorry. director. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, this is a very important uh, issue, and uh, PDT is uh, making efforts to mobilize resources. Uh, what we have been doing is uh, more collaboration, wider collaboration. That is a one issue. Uh, we, have, we are enjoying very good collaboration with World Health Organization. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Dr. Tedros, uh, DG, is visiting the day after tomorrow. Uh, with this collaboration, we have a lot of partners. Uh, partners find our project very uh, beneficial in the long term. Uh, they are uh, uh, insurance companies and pharmaceutical they find it very uh, useful, something win-win, win-win between WHO, ITU, and their company. So we try to um, uh, make the, some optimum uh, state that they feel this activity very uh, uh, attractive to, to those uh, partners. And some of them are telecom uh, operators. And we are, we are kicking efforts to make this happen. And another uh, key uh, point is uh, we are making collaboration with the regional office of uh, WHO. Uh, we recently uh, launched a project in Africa with the uh, Afro uh, regional office of WHO. And they are very uh, keen to uh, promote this initiative. That is two points. Thank you. Okay, and of course, I mean, speakers and panelists, feel free to jump in uh, if you have additional comments. Now, floor to Guillermo to answer to the question from the gentleman. Sí, eh, muchas gracias por la pregunta. Eh, en estos momentos, eh, la fue aprobada por Landmat en la estación de telemedicina móvil. Se está comercializando y fue utilizada a modo experimental ya en la Antártida y en Haití. Y en estos momentos tenemos este día viernes una reunión eh, a las 12 del mediodía con el embajador de Haití en Argentina para llevar un segundo equipo, y, porque el primer equipo estaba instalado en el hospital móvil que tenía la Fuerza Aérea y este segundo equipo ya va a ser instalado en un hospital eh, directamente de, de la, del país de Haití. Sí, sí. Um, currently, uh, the ADMO is in a experimental... Uh, stage, uh, but the production is being uh, is on the plans, and uh, it's being tested in Antarctica and Haiti. And we are planning to take another station to Haiti um, next Friday. Thank you. Thank you, Guillermo. Please come around again. Other questions, uh, other views? Okay, so maybe, uh, yes, please. Thank you for this opportunity. I am uh, Ahmed Hassan from uh, Sudan, so the tele Telecom Group, Sudakat so Academy. Uh, actually, I want to comment on this uh, event. What, what I miss in this uh, panel, uh, I think if, if we saw uh, the roadmap about uh, what, 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 why we are now in this issue, using ICT for uh, uh, UCH, and where we have to be in uh, 20, uh, 2030, and what, what is the action plan for, for every, every country or every, every, every region, I think there is more, more, uh, more effort we have to do 
uh, between WHO and ITU, uh, so as to get benefit from 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 the more experienced, and so as to, sp to spread the, the 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 experience between all, all over the world. Thank you. Okay, I, I think that is a very very fair point and. Uh and uh, this is applicable to any sector and to any verticals, if you want, you know, because, uh, of course, having a long stand uh, sustainable roadmap for, let's say, development in area areas is, is a fundamental question for all of us. Um, I can say that uh, ITUS WHO are trying to build this through the activities, but uh, rather than talking about the ITU and WHO, I want also to get the views from the panelists on how this possibly this uh, let's say approach or this roadmap can be built. Who could be the stakeholders that would be part of this roadmap? You think it should be within the UN? You think it should be a public-private partnership? You think it should be driven by the governments? If you remember, you know, the World Summit for the Information Society established an information society roadmap uh, up to 20 uh, something, you know, sometimes it's 2025, sometimes 2015, sometimes 2030. The Sustainable Development Goal that the UN has lots of emphasis on health as one of the key, uh, let's say, uh, principles to be embraced. And, uh, but sometimes we see also that there are failures in the progress and in the, in the, in the commitment at the national and international level. So maybe you, you may want to provide a view here. Mr. Oh, <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for the, uh, I think it was not a question, but um, a statement, uh, but uh, uh, a, a very clear one, uh, that there is need for a road map. Uh, what, we, what we know at the moment is that uh, by 2030, uh, we, uh, we are attempting to achieve universal health coverage. What is not clear is how we are going to get there. And I think that was um, uh, the uh, aim of my presentation, that uh, we have to be clear uh, who is doing what for us to get to uh, 2030 uh, with uh, universal uh, health coverage. Uh, there are already some countries, I think, which, which are more or less there because of their economic development. Um, even when you look at internet coverage, it's 100%. When you look at infrastructure, it's, it's nearly 100%, uh, uh, ICT infrastructure. But there are some countries where the infrastructure is a big impediment uh, to any access. So in such situations, it would be important for the UN system, uh, uh, the ITU, and, and uh, you know, to look at how they can uh, uh, sort of babysit those who are, uh, you know, lagging behind, whether there is a way of elevating them in terms of um, in terms of assistance, that is um, uh, 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 that would be my point. That there is no uh, help if uh, only a few countries reach the universal uh, uh, health coverage for all, and yet there are some who cannot even afford three tablets to prevent malaria. In other countries, malaria is no, nothing to talk about anymore. But in some countries now, malaria is a big killer. So these are things which we have to be looking at. And I think ITU, uh, especially uh, the development unit, can really assist in this to push for it yeah, so that at least there is something that can be done about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Konate, maybe you want to add? Yes, sure, sure. Then. We'll do another round. No, no, uh, eh, nosotros, okay. eh, como miembros, eh, como miembros de, de la universidad y miembros de la academia en la UIT, en la ITU, eh, queremos agradecer y felicitar el trabajo conjunto que desarrolla la ITU con la OMS, con la Organización Mundial de la Salud, porque hemos participado de esos trabajos y creemos que es elemental ese trabajo en conjunto por el tema de los estándares y la interoperabilidad. Así que simplemente era 
para agradecerles y para felicitarlos por el trabajo que hacen, porque tuvimos la suerte de participar en muchas de esas reuniones y de esos trabajos. From the university as a member of the academia and ITU, we would like to thank uh, the conjoint job uh, between the ITU and the WHO because we've uh, participated and evidenced uh, those um, multiple um, uh, jobs and works we've, um, we've um, taken part of in order to um, improve the, the access to, to healthcare. Thank you, moderator. From our point of view, uh, this is a journey, a journey we must walk together. When I say we, it's a public and private. There are so many things to do to achieve these uh, goals. Uh, from Cote d'Ivoire part, uh, in terms of implementation, we're coming with two schemes, contribution schemes. One is contribution, and the second is non-contribution. Non-contribution is for the very poor people. It's like on the universal service obligation. The last mile, the public should be there to try to bring something else. The private man must support this program because we're talking about healthcare system, information system. A lot of data to be collect, collected, to be managed. All this complex system, we need the support of the private, but also the ITU. This is a partnership we're looking for between the public and the private, and the ITU uh, really could uh, push to help in establish this partnership. Well, I, I guess uh, the answer, of course, is that this roadmap has to be built in collaboration and in cooperation. Now, I think that's a, quite a sticky point sometimes because this cooperation doesn't happen, I mean, sometimes it's not so effective as it's supposed to be. But I guess that for uh, areas where there is a strong need and health is one of them, uh, I, I guess the commitment has to be a little bit more uh, emphasized in terms of the, uh, the effort that the countries are, are taking and the international organization are taking. Aryushi, you want to add something? Uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Yes, uh, I, w I would like to highlight again the importance of collaboration. Uh, this uh, collaboration with WHO is quite successful uh, for the moment. Uh, for the first phase, uh, <clears throat> we raised uh, quite a amount of, of funds. And uh, in the second phase, uh, another institution is quite interested. We are going to deploy a knowledge sharing hub uh, to share the knowledge of uh, e-health. Um, <clears throat> what like to highlight is uh, we have collaboration with uh, uh, UNESCO for education and uh, uh, food for FAO. All efforts to have more collaboration, how ICT is u useful for the benefit of uh, uh, people's life. Um, to create more uh, needs of ICT will in turn uh, uh, create the investment of telecommunication, and that will lead to the universal coverage of telecommunication. So, uh, <clears throat> needs of tele ICT and investment is uh, uh, two sides of the same coin. It's a chicken and egg. If you feel uh, e-health is very useful, people start using. Uh, people using old phone may purchase 4G, 5G phone. And they, they want to buy it. They want to invest, and telecom operators will invest more. That is a chicken and egg. We want to um, <clears throat> promote this uh, good cycle, and we are, are trying to uh, collaborate with the UN agency and to create a good investment. And we are quite successful. We are uh, starting second phase from this year. Uh, we have this uh, European half. And, and in the first phase, uh, we are centered to uh, non-communicable diseases, uh, NCDs. 
like a cancer and a diabetes. And second phase, we are also looking for any new technology, innovative technology. That's the progress. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Yushi. I guess um, it's uh, just in time. It's 1.32. I don't know if there will be other people using this room, but uh, our time is up. And uh, I want to thank again the distinguished panelists and all of you to, be, to have been here and to have this, this discussion. I hope it was uh, informative and, uh, and useful for you. Thanks a lot and have a nice day. Bye. Thank you.